Today, I'm going to talk about a hotly debated topic. This comes up over and over in coachings forever and ever. It's something all voice actors have to deal with all the time. And I'm going to weigh in on this topic from my 25 years of experience. We're going to talk about voice acting demos. So when I think of demos, I really think about two kinds of demos. So there's the homebrew, which is what you start with. It could be auditions that you're starting with, gigs that you've recorded. They're just things that you're recording uh, yourself at home, and maybe you're putting music in the background or some sound effects, or you're sending them to someone that can do that for you. Those are homebrews, and those are amazing, and you should continue your whole career through to make homebrews. Yes, you should continue your whole career through to make homebrews homebrew demos. They're very important. They're a skill, but as you get better at performing, your homebrews will become better and better. Then there's the professional demo, what I call agency demos. So in this scenario, you hire a company, they write scripts for you, they put the music in the background, they EQ your voice, they make you sound like a million bucks. And basically what you're hiring them to do in a good scenario is that they're pairing your strengths with trends in the marketplace so that your demos are hot. They represent what is working in the marketplace, what buyers want from their voices. And the reason you do a demo like this usually is because you want an agent or multiple agents because you're looking to get high profile work and that type of work generally comes through an agent. Now, people get really excited about professional demos. They wanna get them as quickly as possible so they can get that agent and get the high profile work. And I totally get the excitement, I've been there. But if you're not producing quality auditions, and I'm not talking about audio quality here, I'm talking about performance. If you're not able to be authentic in your reads and original in your reads, you run the very high risk, and this has happened to me, where the agency you're getting into will drop you. And once that happens, it is a major, major confidence buster. And here's the thing, homemade demos can bring in a lot of money and a lot of work and a lot of regular work. So there's actually no rush to get a professional demo until you're ready. It doesn't mean that you won't be able to work. If you're already booking work on your own, through your own means, whether it's via marketing or via pay to play sites, however it is that you're getting work, if you are getting work, you can just focus on making really good homebrews and you can hire a coach. I do this a lot with people where we listen to auditions that you've recorded or gigs that you've recorded. Sometimes we, re we rework them, hard to say. And um, we put music in the background and that's something you can do yourself or we send them to a producer to do it. Either way, those homebrews can do amazing for you and get you a lot of work so that you'll be able to afford a really good coach, work on your performance, and then maybe a year down the line, two years down the line, you make that professional demo and you're really ready. And once you get into that agency, you're gonna be turning around really great auditions that are going to book you work or at least get the attention of casting directors or at least get your agents excited about your work. The last thing you wanna do is get an agent excited, go through the whole onboarding process with the agency, and then a few weeks later for them to realize that your auditions are not up to snuff. It is so important to be able to reproduce the types of reads that are in your demos with other scripts. And here's why, and you already know this if you've been working at this for a while. Your demos become references for both your clients and yourself. I'll give you an example. So a client comes to you, they have their own script and they like one of your demos and they say, can you make our script sound like that demo? And in theory, this sounds easy, but it's anything but. Sometimes I work with students for a long time before they're able to apply the same skills to different scripts. It is not easy. We do all kinds of things subconsciously and it's hard to bring things into the conscious and say, oh, I just did that. And oh, wow, I didn't know I did that. 
and breaking down those habits that we have and creating some new ones. It doesn't happen overnight. It takes a lot of resolve, a lot of patience. You have to be vulnerable. You have to fail and get back up again. It's very rewarding in the end when you, you're finally able to apply the same skills over multiple scripts, but it takes some time. Now, let's look at an example where the demo serves as a reference for you. So let's say, for example, you have a type of voice that would do really well in cosmetics. So there's all kinds of cosmetics companies, but a lot of times they want the same thing over and over. So if you have a good reference on your demo, if you have a good demo, you're going to have a good reference and you're able to inspire yourself from your demo and recreate that same type of read for all the other cosmetic commercials that come your way and you have a higher risk of booking it because you're starting from the right place if your demo is well produced. So you can see that the demo is incredibly useful for the client and for yourself. When you're not able to reproduce the reads in your demo on a regular basis with other types of copy consistently, you're really letting everyone down. Your agents who are getting excited about you, the clients who are going through the trouble of hiring you and selling you to the rest of their team, but most importantly, yourself, you're shooting yourself in the foot because it is so hard to pick yourself up from being hired and then being rejected. It's really, really difficult. It's depressing and it's hard to come back from that. And you really want to create positive experiences for yourself. You don't want to go through that. You know, life is too short. So the way to avoid that is to go into your professional demo production, really ready to produce consistent quality reads that also answer market trends, you know, because your clients and agent, they want to sound cool. They want to sound like what's going on out there today. They don't want to sound like 1980. So it's important to learn all that and to be able to apply that. And that's something you learn in coaching over a long period. The great thing about homebrews is you're not really going to run into this issue because you're using material that you perform every day. And of course, you might tweak them a little bit more because maybe when you did that audition, you were in a rush and now you're going to rework the script a little bit, give it a bit more thought, but it's still going to be closer to what you can produce. The other great thing about homebrews is you can update them. You can create new ones as often as you want. And in a market that is changing all the time. This is fantastic because what worked last year might not work this year, but here you are collecting material and creating it yourself so that you can answer market trends. You want to make professional demos when you're ready to cross over. Notice I'm not saying when you want to cross over because those are two different things. I worked for years with homebrews without any coaching. I was getting hired. And there's a lot of students that I coach that are in that situation. They're already working. Their homebrews are getting them work, but now they're getting professional coaching. And once you get professional coaching consistently for a while and you're practicing, one day you will be ready for those professional demos and you will be ready to cross over and get into a bigger market. Since homebrews can take you such a long way, there really is no rush to create a professional demo. Professional demos are very expensive and prohibitive as well, and you would only do them every few years. Whereas with homebrews, you can do them any time. And if something is hot, you can create more homebrews that are in that same vein and you can get very targeted with your market. I think they're wildly underrated. I've done extremely well with my homebrews. So I hope that you take them seriously and any coaching that you do towards a professional demo will apply to your homebrews. My favorite thing about homebrews is that they're an accurate reflection of your skills, of what you can do day in and day out. And that means your clients will be satisfied because they'll be coming to you for what you can do. And that is the best type of relationship you can hope for. If this is your first time here and you like the content in this video, please subscribe. This is a labor of love and it means the world to me. One last thing, I wanted to let you know that I'm putting a class together on this very hot topic of homemade demos. It's going to be great, but limited in size. So the best way to apply is to be on my mailing list. So if you're not already on it, join. The URL should be somewhere here. And if you haven't read my books, you'll get the books at a discount too. I'll see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.